Good day, folks, and welcome to another edition of Lumberjack Logic Live. I'm your host, Neil Johnson, and I am so excited to share this news with you because big things are happening in Georgia. And really, there's a case that a lot of people don't even know about going on down there. Uh, it's outside of the courtroom with Fannie Willis, but it is drastically affecting Fannie Willis's case. And in fact, uh, just exposed everything. And this, this is involving uh, the disbarment trial. So they, they've gone too far. OK, so they this is the thing about the left. They don't just stop at, well, you know, we need to, um, you know, what do I want to say here? Uh, you know, facilitate some wrongdoings. OK, but then we need to go after the people who are trying to expose us. And then we're going to try to disbar the attorney. And there's a hearing going on down there, and I'm sharing some clips of it today that are going to blow your ever-loving mind. In addition to that, Harrison Floyd, she went after the wrong guy there, and by going after Michael Roman, she went after the wrong guy there, one of the top opposition researchers in Washington, D.C., but Harrison Floyd is doing some wild things. So you know, hang with me through this because I'm going to tie it all together. I think I'm going to start with Harrison Floyd a little bit on him. And then I'm going to bring you right into this disbarment hearing. Uh, absolutely mind-numbing stuff. I do need to mention my sponsor. In fact, folks, because I'm going to do something a little different here, because it's uh, Georgia and because it's uh, down there dealing with elections, I am going to share a commercial Mike Lindell made for me. This is one minute. So, you know, in the replay, if you just don't want to listen to this, you can skip over it. But it's Mike, and I love him, and it's awesome. So check this out. My pillow. It was just a problem solution, one product company. Well, since then, with the help of my dedicated employees, we now have hundreds of products, some you might not even know about. To get the word out, we're having a $25 extravaganza. Two pack multi use My Pillows, $25. My Pillow Sandals, $25. And for the first time ever, our six pack towel sets. You guessed it, just $25. $25. Our brand new four pack dish towels, $25. And I've never done this before. Premium my pillows with all new Giza fabric, any size, any loft level, even king size for only $25. And there's so much more. So go to mypillow.com or call the number on your screen. Use your promo code for our $25 extravaganza. Order $75 and over, your entire order ships absolutely free. There you go. I got it. Mike Liddell's commercial in there, and uh, they just got that to me yesterday. So uh, anyways, thanks so much, all of you who do support Mike Liddell, because I, I really uh, want to, I guess, credit him with, with some of this for all he's done. But let me just pull this in. First, we're going to talk briefly about Harrison Floyd. Then I'm going to take you to that video uh, from Georgia and show you exactly what's happening. But we now have under oath testimony, not just signed affidavits, people, but under oath testimony that blows Georgia to pieces. This is wild. So let's go into this first. This is uh, black kryptonite, the problem Fannie Willis never saw coming. I've talked about Harrison Floyd a little bit before, but this is a great summation of it. Harrison Floyd isn't just trying to beat the Fulton case. He's using it to expose corruption in Georgia. So far, he hasn't just knocked Willis off course. He's winning. Our typical conservative co-defendant doesn't show up to court wearing an unstructured Kelly Green blazer and navy blue smoking slippers. They don't calmly read a book about stoicism as the district attorney argues to have their bond revoked. They certainly don't interrupt the county's lead prosecutor while they are in the middle of trying to revoke their bond to correct them about appropriate titles. But that's exactly what Harrison Floyd did. Why would a black man facing multiple felony counts in a state with a historically racist justice system taunt prosecutors trying to put him away in open court? Harrison Floyd is kryptonite to DA Fannie Willis's Georgia RICO case, and he knows it. He's not just trying to beat the Fulton County case. He's using it to expose corruption in Georgia. Okay, he is winning people. And this, this disbarment case is where we really won. I, it's like we've been watching the wrong, we're, we're paying attention to the wrong thing 
and you'll see that when I share these video clips. When DA Willis announced the Georgia RICO indictment in August 2023, her star power and case trajectory looked bright. After quickly racking up four guilty pleas, everything appeared to be falling into place. But denying Floyd Bond and making him the only co-defendant to be detained in Fulton County Jail backfired. Harrison walked away with over a quarter million dollars in a defense fund because we raised money. I mean, he he raised money off that. She threw him in jail. She threw, this is this black woman, throws this black man in jail and then wants to revoke his bond. And he countered with a media blitz bashing Fulton County leadership. He raised money for inmates in the infamous jail and repeatedly exposed holes in the DA's case on social media. By mid-November, Willis was forced into a courtroom to messle momentum away by revoking his bond. One could easily tell DA Willis was feeling extremely insecure from observing her actions, mannerisms, and behaviors. She failed to mask it with the arrogance and bravado as she shouted and demanded Judge McAfee remand Floyd into custody for intimidating witnesses. I don't know if you guys remember this. This happened a little while back. Her team asked her to tone it down, but instead she said Floyd should shut his mouth. Again, it backfired. The judge found no evidence of witness intimidation, but did find a technical communication violation. He modified the bond to account for social media, and Harrison walked away a free man. The media attention raised more money for his defense fund. Floyd doesn't just win battles. He makes her pay for the attempt. Harrison Floyd is a black conservative, but not in a Ben Carson or Clarence Thomas way. When he left Fulton County Jail, Harrison donned the typical Brooks Brothers Republican blazer and khakis. But if you look down, you'll notice iconic streetwear and a pair of reimagined Air Jordan 3s. Harrison is sophisticated enough for policy conversation in the West Wing, but can chop it up on the corner in the SWATs. He's cool. This is why his unapologetically NWA-style stance toward the district attorney resonates with the heavily Black geographic uh, demographic of Fulton County. So there he is, this Harrison Floyd. Now, I'm going to pull away from this article here, people, and I'm going to take you into some epic. So for those who have not followed my channel since the beginning, there is a guy down in Georgia. His name is Garland Favorito. He's doing the Lord's work. He is nonpartisan. He has worked on voter cases for both Republicans and Democrats. He did not even vote for Donald Trump. And when you watch this, this is him in a in a in this hearing. This is for the disbarment trial, people. So let me just I'll pull you up here. So it's my I, I my friend CanCon has been sharing these on X, but this is the cross examination, meaning this is the attorney trying to disbar Jeff Clark. Okay. Voter GA, that's Garland Favorito, breaks it down under oath. And I think Declare Your Ballot said this so well. You might be, this might be the greatest cross examination failure of all time. The ODC prosecutor is challenging Garland Favorito to list examples of actual fraud and not just potential fraud. Rule number one don't ask a question you don't know the answer to. So Garland's going to break all this down. But the other thing, people, you never agree. <laughs> it's a rule in court. You'd never agree with uh, the the defense when you're a prosecutor. And that's exactly what he does at the end of this. Garland is so convincing. Now, this is sped up just a little bit. Garland talks real slow. So the guy had sped this up, but you should be able to hear it well. Check this out. You list for us the ones which you believe are evidence of actual fraud having been committed. Well, um, you're referring to electronic? Um Anything. Uh, well, I'll give you an example. As a result of our concerns expressed in the December uh, and November, we conducted, um, we did a full statewide request for ballot images from all the counties. We found out that the original ballot images in um, over about 70 counties had been destroyed, uh, in, which, in, in spite of the fact that they were required to be retained by, for two years by federal and state law. We went in and we analyzed in Fulton County again, I hate to keep going back to them, but um, we found out that the Fulton County ballot images were electronically altered before the certification of the results in 2020. You guys uh, that catch is that? Uh, evidence of actual fraud that occurred, uh, which is still not really. Again, altered before. Uh, this is he is laying this out right now. Nobody knows this better in Georgia than than Garland Favorito. He is laying it out. The guy just asked him a question. He obviously didn't think that Garland Favorito was going to give the answers that he's giving. Properly investigated to this day. Okay, that's one. What what else? 
Um, <clears throat> in um, regards, we've since found that there were um, at least a thousand double copy ballots in uh, Chatham County. Um, and we have found, um, I think, 8,000 double scan ballots statewide, approximately. Now, that is not necessarily fraud. That could be errors, or it could be a mixture of fraud and errors. We have no way of knowing until all that's investigated. These, these are things that you're, you've found. You're our, 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 our organization has, has um, can, can some us, of these things. Can you cite us some examples of evidence of fraud uh, that is in the public record? Not something that you have. This is so awesome because now he's saying, oh, yeah, but this is your organization. Now can you give us examples in the public record? Watch this. Uh, investigate and uncover, but, you know, uh, any other evidence of fraud? Well, the evidence of the counterfeit ballots that we talked about earlier, um, again, these were mail-in ballots that weren't folded from being mailed. They were not uh, uh, on the correct paper stock. They were not marked with a writing instrument. They were marked with toner, according to senior poll managers who's got sworn affidavits in court cases right now. Um, so uh, that and they, and they were they testified that they were marked the same way down ballot for a dozen in a row. That's clear evidence of fraud okay. in the 2020 election that was known before January 3rd. In fact, it was known uh, before December 3rd. There were 100 of those ballots, correct? No one knows how many ballots were because we've spent three years in court trying to find, get those ballots public record. We uh, actually uh, appeal. If you guys haven't been following this case, he has. He spent three years in court. Uh, we've covered this ad nauseum. They they have never had access. To the to the ballots themselves, a case to the Georgia Supreme Court. We won the case in the Georgia Supreme Court. They declared that we had had standing all around, all along, and the Superior Court judge had made a complete error. That case went back down. He then passed it off to another judge uh, who we uh, believed was too impartial. We filed a motion to recuse. So after three years, we had still not got to see the ballots that there were six sworn affidavits for that were counterfeit. That is not the appropriate way to investigate. And the Secretary of State's office filed an amicus brief against us to try to prevent us from looking at the ballots. What kind of a Secretary of State would have done that? Corruption, I guess. Did you guys catch that? Um, Your words, not mine. I've got to play that again for you. Listen closely. Listen closely, man. This is this is wild. And that. Corruption, I guess. A corrupt no, one, what... I guess. Did you catch that? This is what kind of what kind of they, what he's talking about here is. Look, they keep blocking us at every turn. All we want to do is simply see the goods, and they keep blocking us. In in addition to that, we were ruled that we had standing. This goes back to this. I, it's like Sons of Confederate. I did a video on this a while ago, but the bottom line is there was a Supreme Court ruling in the state of Georgia that showed that they had standing. And they even in that, please smash that like, people. Let's get this stream out there. Uh, this We should have 10,000 people on this stream. This is the biggest deal going on in Georgia. And everybody's paying attention to what's going on in the Fonnie Willis courtroom. But this is where the action is right now because this is where everything's being exposed. But uh, again, I'm going to play it one more time because he asked after saying, look, we, we've done this, we've done this, we've done this. We keep getting denied, denied. Why is the Secretary of State blocking us? What kind of Secretary of State does that? And watch this. Just to try to prevent us from looking at the ballots. What kind of a Secretary of State would have done that? Corruption, I guess. That's that, your opinion, not mine. Um, your opinion, not mine. Do you guys just get how big this is? So he just, oh gosh. He, you know, this is, this is the ODC prosecutor. This is the prosecutor. He just agreed with Garland Favorito and said, you know, when, when he asked the question, what kind of secretary of state would do that? Uh, Garland puts the question back on him. And the prosecutor says a corrupt one, I guess. <laughs> I mean, you have got to be kidding me. Okay, but it gets better. We've got more video. Okay, so now let's go down to here. Oh, another thing. He posted this. 12,000 votes in the presidential race. Republican won, but needed 14,000 to be above 50%. No signal for verification done. Runoff for either Purdue or Lafayette races. So he says the U.S. Senate race is currently illegitimate. Okay, now let's get down this. Now, this Fulton County not only wouldn't provide chain of custody documents to citizens for transparency, but they wouldn't provide it to their own certifying board. So this, again, out of the same hearing, Fundamentally, what that what that en encompasses. All right, that's great. Thank you very much. I interrupted you to get that, so uh, pick back up where you were talking about uh, asking for and not receiving. Oh, I'm sorry. Chain of custody documents. Okay, well, that you know, since we we asked and did not receive any this. of it, fundamentally, what that what that en encompasses. All right, that's great. Thank you very much. I interrupted you to get that, so uh, pick back up where you were talking about uh, asking for and not receiving chain of custody documents. Okay, well, that, you know, since we, we asked and did not receive any of it, you know, that to me is just one reason. Well, how can I trust 
you know, as a board member to certify this election when I cannot receive even a sampling, anything at all, with regards to chain of custody, uh, chain of custody documents. So that was just a, another one of the things in my mind leading up to certification that was uh, something that you, you know certainly was not fulfilled. Fundamentally, what that what that in, encompasses. All right, that's great. Thank okay, you on. very much. Now, I so this is Mark Wingate, okay? And you need to understand, he's on the certifying board of the elections, and he's just telling you he couldn't even get the information, okay? They wouldn't provide it to their own certifying boards. So CanCon says, like I said months ago, Fannie is absolutely prosecuting the wrong people on the wrong end on the wrong side of this. Okay, now let's go on to the next one. Here's another big one. There it is, testimony today under oath from Mark Wingate again. Okay, uh, Fannie Willis knows that no signature, signature verification was done in Fulton, that 147,000 ballots that by law are invalid. So we're going to listen to this one. This one's a little bit longer. Pay attention. Uh, and I'll pause it was, here, maybe make a comment. Was, um, well, not the last thing, but the, the, the big, what I call the four or five things that, that prevented me from certifying was the we had such a huge, huge number of absentee by mail ballots. And those ballots, um, we, we as, the, as the department and the board and then the uh, board of commissioners who have to approve, you know, certain expenditures um, because it was, you know, becoming very, very clear that there was gonna be a larger amount of absentee by mail ballots this, this election year than by far than in previous years. So they uh, found a term in a system that um, is called Bluecrest. And the Bluecrest platform primarily was an absentee by mail or a paper ballot uh, 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 processing uh, um, application. And that would, you know, scan in the outer oath envelopes, it would open them, it would then pull them out, it would flatten them, as they call it, and then put them in bundles for, <clears throat> excuse me, for later processing and scanning. Uh, part of that, or one of the applications or elements of that Bluecrest platform uh, was a, uh, an electronic signature verification component. And of course, we all, as that was reported, we all thought that that was going to be up and running and how, <clears throat> excuse me, how exactly that the department and the people uh, 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 there for managing the absentee by mail ballot processing would have a very fine function in the electronic signature verification <laughs> component. Well, as I recall, I believe that time frame was in October at, at the board meeting for October. Uh, I had asked the question, where are we with regards to the functionality of the uh, electronic signature verification component? And I was told that uh, the um, technicians from Bluecrest were in our building that day and that they were working to functionalize the um, the electronic signature verification component. Well, well, functionality and functionalize. Uh, What's the plain English meaning of that? Meaning getting it to work. Thank you. If All that right. makes sense, yeah. I'm sorry, I was unclear. Right. They were in there to make the thing work. Okay. Okay, so he's talking about these people from Bluecrest. They're in there to make the thing work. You all got this, you all following along. I think, it again, if you just jumped on the stream, this is from a hearing to disbar one of the attorneys in the state of Georgia, and it's bringing all this to light. This is not in the Fonnie Willis Rico hearing. This is in a hearing to disbar an attorney in the state of Georgia. And so at this hearing for disbarment, the defense, those they're saying, you know, it should be disbarring Jeff Clark. They put together a case and the uh, ODC attorney is up there say, asking all these questions and getting answers I don't think he's prepared for at all, but it's blowing everything up right now. And, you know, we certainly, you know, as we would let, you know, the board meeting concluded, we went on, but um, after the fact, we 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 were not 
hold in between that October date. And then, of course, about a month later, the election itself, you know, at least I was not told that they didn't that they did not get it to work. Uh, so, you know, somewhere along the line and I can't I am sorry, I can't remember exactly when it was, but I had asked the question, well, OK, well, you know, what did we do for signature verification? And the comment I got back was, which, frankly, at that time, floored me, this. was, well, you know, we didn't do any. Right. Did you guys catch that? What did you do for signature verification? And the answer you got back is, we didn't do any. This is under oath testimony for the public record right in front of God and everyone. Under oath testimony. This isn't at a Senate hearing. This isn't. This is at a hearing to disbar an attorney, a pro-Trump, pro-election integrity attorney. And I remember kind of, I forget where I was, you know, I was on a phone call, I forget exactly, and I apologize, it's been so long. But, you know, I do remember that comment that, you know, we didn't do any. Now, of course, I took that saying, all right, well, by law, you know, you, you've got to do signature verification. You've got you've got to at least have somebody looking at this. And one side of that is uh, that the whomever you have that is looking at and supposed to be, you know, verifying signature, that if there is no signature on the oath envelope, then how are you carrying that or what are you doing with them? And they I, I remember going down, to, you know, on, on from that and said, well, you know, there weren't many, so we just sent them back out. And if they reply on time, then they'll get their vote counted. This is nuts. I mean, this is, I, I just, people, this is, this is going on right now in Georgia. And I don't think most people even know this is actually happening. And we're getting bombshell after bombshell uh, released in this. No signature verification. Are you kidding me? Wow, we just didn't do it. What the hell is going on down there in Georgia? This and, and then that whole testimony from Garland Favorito when the when the uh, when the prosecutor gets going at him and says, and Garland Favorito turns it back on him and says, what kind of secretary of state would do that? And the the, the Galdarn attorney says, a corrupt one, I guess. And Garland responds, your words, not mine. Oh, gosh, glory to God, this is coming out. Do you know how long this has taken? Do you know what a struggle this has been over the years? Do you know how many people were, were banned, censored, and all of this stuff? And here we now have something we can show. We, we don't have to editorialize it a bunch. I mean, it's just right there. That's the prosecuting, that's the prosecutor wanting to disbar Clark saying this and agreeing with Garland Favorito now. So back to the Harrison Floyd piece, and we'll wrap this up. But do want to mention my sponsor again, MyPillow, MyPillow.com, promo code Lumberjack, folks, big savings. But again, you know, I I, just, I love Mike Lindell. Uh, I do, and I love what he's doing. So if you're going to buy gifts for people, go get them there. The $25 extravaganza is going on. You can just type in MyPillow.com forward slash Lumberjack, and it'll bring you right to uh, my page. Or you can call me at 800-568-2865. It's nice because then you can actually ask questions. Floyd's presence instantly makes her typical deflection tactics ineffective. So far, her instinctual response to any criticism is to pull the race card because she knows it will largely cause her accusers to back away, but she can't do that with Floyd. On top of that, Harrison knows her race baiting tactics and how to counter them. Harrison Floyd is more physically, mentally, and politically sophisticated than D.A. Willis. The brutally honest combat hard Marine has made it clear Willis can't intimidate or kowtow him into submission. He turned down a plea deal and is using the case to force the county into turning over sealed election evidence. After the relationship re revelation about Nathan Wade, D.A. Willis most likely insecure about someone discovering something else or many somethings, people, like we just saw in those in those videos where she is involved in cheating, lying, and or misrepresenting himself, herself. Harrison is what she could have been if her morals and dignity weren't for sale to the highest bidder. She hates Harrison for being what she isn't, opposing her and exposing the very means by which she ended up as Fulton DA, fraudulent. That's the crux of her problem with Harrison. 
She's too deep into corrupt Fulton County politics to ever be what he is. She's too deep into the case to dismiss the charges and get rid of him. And to make matters worse, her case forced Fulton County to admit they did not verify signatures during the 2020 election. Please smash that like, people. The story has got to get out. From her tone, body language, and other telltale signs during her recent testimony on her relationship with Wade, it is beyond clear that Willis regularly carries herself with an air of smug, unearned self-confidence, an arrogance born out of a delusional belief that she is above criticism and scrutiny. You guys all remember, I'm not the one on trial here. It's them. They're on trial. Okay. She could not comprehend the idea that one day she might be held accountable for her actions and her self-righteousness was poorly contained throughout the whole ordeal. She clearly cannot cope with the idea of accountability. Which is why the district attorney ran to her father for testimony and used her identity as a black woman as a shield. But if there's one thing that gets under her skin even more, it's the kind of scrutiny that even the race card cannot protect her from. For all her claims of racism and discrimination against her, she now finds herself facing the music over her horrendous persecution of a black man. Once she exposed to far worse treatment than anything she herself has undergone. Harrison Floyd's efforts to expose her corruption are the ultimate kryptonite that she cannot withstand. That, again, out of American greatness, uh, a great follow there. But, people, I, I hope, I, I, just in the chat really quickly, as you followed along, some of you have been, and if you just got on the stream, there's some video from before on a separate hearing that you need to watch. Go back and watch that. But do you guys... Um, do you guys get how big this is? Yes or no? I mean, do you understand? I mean, we now have under oath all of this being exposed. And then you've got Harrison Floyd, who's not willing to back down while Jenna Ellis runs it. I'm my only known dad when I know now. You know, that kind of crap. And yet here we've got Harrison Floyd fighting the good fight, fighting the bad. We got Jeff Clark down there who's they're threatening disbarment against. And all of a sudden, well, I now have on the record in a trial because the attorney doesn't know the answer as he presses the fight to get rid of Jeff Clark. He doesn't know the answer to the question, so he dares ask uh, uh, Garland Favorito the questions that Garland responds to correctly and exposes everything and then even gets the prosecuting attorney to agree that the Secretary of State must be corrupt. We're talking Raffensburger. Smash that like. My gosh, this is the greatest thing, people. Anyways, I'm so, I'm so excited to get this stream out. I thank you so much for joining me. Again, check out my sponsor, MyPillow, mypillow.com forward slash lumberjack for the $25 extravaganza that's going on right now. Go support Mike Lindell. He's done so much in this fight, and so many of you have as well. Those of you who signed up to be election workers, poll watchers, everything, thank you. Thank you. From the bottom of my heart, thank you. We're going to get this country back. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. I love y'all. Keep fighting the good fight. Remember to share this content out there. Peace out. I will repost on my X link uh, these, these videos. So if you want to follow me on X or Twitter, you can go over and check those out. Right. Thanks so much.